And I started the recording too. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Chaucer. I'm a, the senior instructional designer um, for the academic technology team. And um, I'm joining you guys today to talk about uh, the Blackboard portfolio tool. Um, what we're gonna be covering today is uh, essentially what the tool does, um, how you can use it for both summative and formative assessment, uh, how you can allow students to showcase their work with each other. Um, I would like to go over some goals and objectives for the tool, um, how you're going to use it in your grading workflow, how you can set it up as an assignment. Um, and I think those are the essentials. Uh, what I would like to say is that as a presenter, I don't like to lecture, I like to interact. So. You guys are welcome to unmute your microphones if you have questions and you're welcome to interrupt me. Um, so if something that I'm covering, you know, you'd like to see again, or if you have a question about, well, why would I do it this way or anything like that, by all means, feel free to talk to me. Um, and uh, my co-pilots are Hugo and Stella. Uh, you guys can um, talk in the chat room. I won't be able to see your questions while I'm presenting. So if there's something really critical that the rest of the group could benefit from, uh, Stella or, or Hugo will let me know um, to stop and answer that question. So you're welcome to either open your mic and ask me a question, or um, you're welcome to chat something in the chat room. Um, but I would like to really start before I kind of dive into to what the portfolio tool is um, and get to know you guys. So if you'd be willing to open your mic and um, introduce yourselves and let me know, um, you know, what's your department that you're teaching in and what classes um, are you interested in using the portfolio tool for um, and kind of what you want to accomplish with it. Just, you know, just take a minute to kind of help me get to know you. And um, because if after this session you want more help, um, I'm going to sh share my contact information with you so that you can schedule an individual consultation with me so that I can, you know, work with you independently um, and help you get your portfolio tools set up. Um, so I'm going to pause now and um, I'll let you guys kind of take turns. Um, I don't know, Stella, if you want to call on people so we can kind of keep it organized, but I would really like to get to know, you know, who you guys are and what's going on first before I, I start talking about the portfolio tool. If, if people want to raise their hands or if they want to unmute themselves, whatever, it's it's fine with me. Good morning, um, Stella. I'll start. My name is Sally Mahmood. I am um, I work for the nursing department. Mm -hmm. Currently, um, I'm not teaching a course that requires a portfolio, but I know we have some of those courses, and I might be teaching those in the near future. So I just wanted to get a general idea. That's great. I've actually worked with lots of nursing departments. It's a very common, a very common group that will want to use portfolios. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. Hi, my name is Leanne and I'm in the English department and I teach freshman composition and we've taught portfolios as part of our pedagogy always. So now I'm trying to do it digitally for great. an online course. Okay. Uh, I can go next. I'm Michelle Burry from the um, Art and Design Department, and I teach in the uh, design area. So we have lots of portfolios. I use other tools, and so I'm really curious to see uh, what um, Blackboard offers. Yes, Michelle, I remember you. You and I had a meeting earlier. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, hi, I'm Danielle. I'm also in the design department, <laughs> um, and I too need to set up portfolios, and I've uh, been using other tools, so I am curious to see what Blackboard offers. Okay. I'm Catherine Clinch. I'm an extended ed. I teach a professional certificate program in social media strategy and content marketing, focusing on micro content. So everything my students do is visual and goes into a portfolio for them. And sharing it through my email has been exhausting. 
So I really want to know how this is going to work best because learning from everybody else is being able to see how people respond to your work mm -hmm. is really effective for the teaching metrics. Okay. This is Vivian Price. I'm in um, interdisciplinary studies and labor studies. Uh, good to be with you. Um, I'm trying to uh, figure out how to transfer the um, social, my social documentation class where students um, arrange photographs and create stories in text to make short films and to try to put that into a portfolio uh, file. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Morning, everyone. My name is Daniela Campins. I'm in the art and design department, and I teach in the studio art section, primarily drawing and painting courses. Since my classes are um, image based and students will be producing um, work, um, I think maybe the portfolio could be a good tool for them to showcase and share with one another um, their work and their works in progress and open that for discussion uh, as a live only document for them. Yes, Danielle, I'm still working on some other options for you, too. <laughs> so I'll go next. Um, I'm Monique Draghi. I'm in the Graduate School of Education, and I was actually trying to build a portfolio and couldn't figure out how to save it so that I could look it over before I published it, so I said I better need, I need a tutorial. Mm. Okay. Uh, Anik, you and I probably will need to um, work offline on that. Um, I ha I'm going to share my contact information at the end. But um, yeah, I think for that one, I would want to just kind of work with you to, to troubleshoot and figure out, you know, where you're, you're struggling on how to publish it. Um, not that you won't learn things from what I'm going to show, but just try to follow up with me after this as well. Uh, okay, who's next? Hi, good morning. I just got here. I'm a little late, so I'm not sure we're doing introductions and why we're interested in the this uh, workshop. I see. Um, yeah, we're covering this. Just, you know, like more, you know, just introduce yourself and what your department is and what you want to maybe accomplish with the portfolio. Okay. Um, sorry for being late. We had some minor emergencies this morning to take care of. Um, I'm Susan Needham and I'm in anthropology and um, I'm not really sure what the portfolio does, but I thought it, um, I, I'm interested in learning as much as I can about Blackboard and what it has to offer um, so that uh, it might trigger some new ways of thinking about putting things together for my classes. Um, also, I teach uh, ethnographic field methods every fall, um, and the students put together um, an ethnography, and uh, I thought that this might be a tool to use for it, but I'm not sure, so that's why I'm here. Okay. Stella, did we miss anybody? Um, I don't think so. I think everybody, unless I miss somebody. <laughs> I think you can proceed. All right. So looks like we have a good, a good mix. Um, okay. So essentially the portfolio tool, the way that I explain it is, um, it is a tool that um, allows you to, um, to give the students a space to showcase their work um, and to build a body of work. Uh, here we go. Uh, that they can either build over the lifetime of, of their tenure at school, or you can have them build something just for your course. So it's really a great tool for both formative and summative feedback because one of the things that I bring up when it comes to teaching students, you know, and they have a project 
that they need to be working on on a regular basis is, you know, what do we do as human beings? We procrastinate and, you know, wait to the last minute and <clears throat> suddenly we find ourselves scrambling to do something and we end up doing a poorer job than if we had had regular check-ins on our progress. So um, just from a, from a teaching standpoint, I want to make sure that my students are turning in work on their project on a regular basis. So whether it's, okay, I want you to be working on a piece of art and I want you to be turning in sketches so I can see that you're developing your, you know, your artwork or, you know, I want you to turn in iterations of a film you're working on, or I want, I want you to keep turning in iterations of um, an essay that you're supposed to be writing. The portfolio tool is really good for that because it allows you to integrate it in not only to your classroom, but it also allows you to integrate it into your grading workflow. So um, essentially, I just built a couple of examples. Um, for this one, I, I went with an English portfolio. Um, from the student perspective, they will be able to, to go into a classroom and um, they can click on a unit and you can, you can make a portfolio assignment where they have to go in and you can, you can have your instructions on, okay, here's what it is that you need to do. Yeah, and I mean, yes. Sorry to interrupt. The screen is very tiny on the, on the top right. Maybe it's me, but it's not as the main screen or. Well, I'm just sharing my desktop. Okay. Maybe it's just, I'm having a problem. I'm just, okay. I don't know what's going on. Um, is that the case for everybody else? Is everyone able to see my screen? I can see your screen big. She's probably in speaker view. Okay. She's not getting the Thank screen. You. Yeah. yeah, let me change that. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for speaking up so you can actually see what's going on. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Stella, if you want to assist her to, to change that. Um, okay, so when you set up your portfolio assignment, um, you can put in all your instructions on, you know, here's what you need to add to your portfolio. Um, and I always try to be as detailed as possible that this is what you need to include in your portfolio. <clears throat> and here's what I expect of you by the time you finish this assignment. So if you wanna have, let's say you have a unit that's gonna last for three or four weeks, you can actually break it down so that you're asking them to turn in a piece of their portfolio every single week. And you can just award them, you know, five points or something for making sure that they're staying on track. And it'll give you an opportunity to give them feedback on each piece that they're turning in. Um, and then I also like to put dates and times that, on when they're supposed to have it done. Um, and then you could, you could add um, to your classroom, you know, you could add multiple um, instances where they have to keep turning in their portfolio updates, right? Um, so I'll get into that in a minute. But as far as the portfolios, it lives over here. Um, it is owned by the student. And so it gives the students a lot of, of benefits in terms of them being able to keep building a body of their work. And um, they're going to be able to continue to work on their portfolio because what they turn into you to grade is just a snapshot. And I'll show you all that in a minute. Um, but the student owns their own portfolio. It is their own private space and they get to choose who and where they share it with. So if they want to turn in their portfolio to a classroom or if they want to turn it into a role within the institution uh, because they need their whole portfolio evaluated by a department to graduate or if they uh, need to, if they want to just share it with a with a fellow student, um, they have control over how they share that. And that's really one of the most powerful aspects of the portfolio because here are all their options. They can share it with another classmate. They can share it with, they can send it to someone if they're looking for a job and they say, well, I want to see your work so far. So they can build that portfolio and they can just email it to an external user. Um, if they want to, if you ask them, well, I want you to share your portfolio with the class 
and let the class see your portfolio wherever you're at, you can create a space inside of your classroom where they can share it. And I'll show you what that looks like too. Um, if you have, um, like I said, if you have the department that's, that needs to evaluate portfolios um, for graduation or for, for credit or something for your department, you can have them share it with an institutional role. So that's, you know, from the student perspective, they can, they can create as many portfolios as they want and you can do the same. You can create your own portfolio um, and show them, here's what I want you to do. Here's an example of what I expect from you so that they, they know um, what they should be working on uh, in order to meet their criteria. So I'm gonna pop back over. Well, uh, I guess I'll pause here. You guys tell me, wh where would you like me to start next? Do you want to actually see an example of what a portfolio can look like, or do you want me to talk a little more about how to integrate the assignment into your course? I'd love to see what it looks like, um, okay. just to get a better understanding of, of how to do everything else, I think. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. I would also like to see how the professor accesses it to grade it. Okay. So, oops. That was not what I meant to click. Actually, it was. I'm sorry. I need to get used to switching back and forth between student account and... <laughs> um, I think it was... Student. Hmm. Jacqueline, while you're logging in. Yes. <clears throat> we have a question for Monica. She, she wants to, or uh, uh, Nick, I'm sorry. Uh, will you be showing how to create the portfolio? I can do that. All right. Um, just making a note. So um, here's an example of a portfolio that I um, developed. Um, so generally, when I make a sample, the main things I want to point out is that with the portfolio tool, students can create a header. They can pick a variety of themes, you know, to give it kind of a style. They can, um, you know, put copyright information at the bottom. Um, and I like to encourage them to introduce themselves in their portfolio with a personal quote. Um, and then, you know, for this example, I'm saying, well, here's all, you know, I was assuming like if it's an English department and they want them to study different styles of writing, um, that they could come up with uh, a portfolio where they're showing, well, I've studied all these poets and here's my favorite poet that I found. And, you know, when you create your portfolio, you basically have the exact same text editor in the portfolio tool that you do in Blackboard Learn. Um, so they can they can put pictures, they can format their fonts, and they can apply color. Um, they can put in links if they want to. Um, they can put in video. They can embed video if they want to. Another nice thing is they can embed artifacts that um, you can then open up and, and view. So um, they have a lot of options in terms of how they want to style their portfolio. But for every single part of the portfolio, they're going to have pages and sections. So um, this first page that we're looking at, I've got three different sections, right? I've got, um, I have my first section where I'm kind of introducing, you know, like for example, in this assignment, if you're going to be studying poetry, and, and you're going to be studying the, the human beings that wrote it, then you're going to want to do some research on who that person is and think about um, how did their life influence their poetry. So, um, you know, I, I kind of was thinking, well, you know, I'd want them to, to put a, a biography of some sort, you know, and, and maybe like a synthesis statement of, of how um, they understand this person's life and how it, it influenced their poetry. And then, you know, pick a favorite poem um, and then add in a synthesis as well of like after, you know, coming to understand what personal experience this poet had, that they could then um, talk about how it influenced 
this particular poem and, and the message of that poem. And then in addition to that, I would ask them, well, okay, if this is your poetry unit, write your own personal poem and attach that as an artifact. Um, so again, this is just a simple example, but um, they can style their portfolio to make it um, very engaging. And they can, you know, for, for my, my nursing faculty who's, who's joining us, they can put in, um, they can paste in charts, you know, for um, their clinics. Uh, anything you want them to put in there uh, to show their progress, it's very simple and easy to do because it's just they're using the same text editor that you're used to in Blackboard um, that allows them to do, you know, YouTube videos and mashups and, you know, embed links and, <clears throat> and, you know, you can leave comments on their artifacts. So all of that's available to you with regards to, to grading and they can make as many pages as they want. So I didn't put anything on this page really, but every page just has sections. So I think it'll make a little bit more sense when I show you um, how to build one. But the only other thing I was going to show you is that they have the ability to change their layout style, um, you know, to find something that suits them. And they can also change, you know, the look and, and feel of it with a couple of different um, selections, uh, you know, just to kind of give it a, a color scheme that they like. Um, uh, and now I forgot which one I ended up using. There we go. Um, so that's just a few things that the student can do uh, in order to make their portfolio look attractive. Okay, so I'm going to close out of that. Ugh. Of course it would just close out of the whole window. <laughs> nope. There we go. Um, so if you want to make a portfolio, all you're going to do is you're going to you're going to go again to this portfolio tab here and you're going to click create portfolio. From there, you're going to give it a title. So let's say you're in your nursing program. If you want, you can give it a description. It's not required. Um, and then um, you have a couple of options as well as in terms of, do you want to make it available? So if you want to just have a space to just work on your own, um, you can just unclick that and it'll be private. But if it's something that they're ultimately going to need to share, then they'll want to make it available. And then um, since you can make comments on the portfolio, the student can decide if they want those comments to be embedded as part of their body of work. So for example, if they turn in something and you want to leave a comment on, you know, this is, you did an excellent job and here's all the reasons why, and they want to display that as part of their progress with their work, they can do that as well. So um, if they say, no, I just, if, if I get negative feedback or whatever, and if I share the portfolio with somebody, I don't want them to see the commentary on my work. I just want them to be able to see the work. They can they can say, I just want the comments to stay private. But that, again, this is owned by the, the user, not the faculty. So if the student says, I don't want anyone to be able to see my comments, that's up to them. Um, so I'll just go ahead and leave that box in check for the moment. Um, after that, students can take a tour, which explains to them how they would build their portfolio. And so it basically will just do a very simple walkthrough of, okay, here's how you build it. Um, and so they can put in a header. Um, and then they can click next and it'll walk them through step by step. Here's how a portfolio works. And so as I was explaining, um, each page can have sections and it's up to them how many sections that they want. They can delete pages, they can delete sections, they can reorder the sections. Um, and so it's a very quick walkthrough about how you use this tool. Um, 
So that kind of was built in to help with the student user experience. Um, and save that. And then if you want to edit, you know, we just click on these pencil icons. Um, and, you know, for each header, we just save it. And it's basically the same thing. It's like you just click on the box that you want to edit. Um, and from there, you know, this is the text box that I was talking about where they have all the same tools that they're used to that they can edit fonts and, you know, if they want to attach, you know, if they want to do files or if they want to insert images, if they want to embed a map, you know, a mashup, um, you know, they can do that. If they want to attach an artifact, so I'll just save that really quickly. Um, oh, that's interesting. Um, but, you know, for adding artifacts, this is where <clears throat> they can upload things into their content collection and um, they can either add an artifact from a file on their computer or they can actually create the artifact here in the text box. So they really do have um, almost limitless opportunities for the way that they want to share content. Uh, you know, so I can click files and, and submit that. And you just, you know, oh, you want me to title it, sorry. I'll just pick a random title. Um, so it's very, very easy and convenient for them to build their portfolio um, because it's just, you know, there's so many different pathways for them to add content and images and artifacts and, and attachments and stuff like that. Um, and then they can add a footer if they want to copyright it. In case they intend on sharing it. So I'll pause there and see if anybody has questions. I have a question. Once it's built in the portfolio section of Blackboard, can it be saved separately and used separately outside of Blackboard? Okay, so um, with the portfolio, the student can take the portfolio with them when they leave Dominguez Hills by downloading it, but they will need to host it on their own website you know, they can just take that package and, and re-host it on, on their own website. Um, as long as they are active students, they are able to share their portfolio in all the ways that I showed you um, just easily. They, they just send an email link and it'll take them right into their portfolio. <clears throat> and again, it's a snapshot of what they chose to share at that time. But as long as they're active students at the campus, they will be able to share their portfolio with pretty much anyone they want. Once they leave though, you know, it's up to the university and I don't really know what our policy is for how long we leave our students accounts active, but once they leave and their account is no longer active, they need to download that portfolio and take it with them and find a way to rehost it on their own. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. I have, I have an extension of that because my students come out with I guess it would be 48 different uh, pages, uh, 48 different sections. Mm -hmm. And part of it is that they have to create a website on Wix. So mm -hmm. will this transfer over to Wix? Can they do that? Or does no. it have to be? No, I don't think it's going to transfer over to Wix because it's a proprietary um, website that um, they have to build inside of Wix. Like I don't, I kind of don't encourage students to, to, or really, I don't encourage anybody to use Wix. They're better off going with like WordPress because it's just, you have more freedom in terms of like your style and your layout. I don't know. It, it's probably well, the first the thing. thing. I have good experiences with Wix, but that's just me. <laughs> okay. I've been using Wix and Weebly since they first started. Mm -hmm. My students are working professionals. They're never going to build a WordPress. The only thing they could use is the crappy one that looks like a blog. And so Wix and Weebly are the best solutions for them for their needs. Okay, and that's so, great if it's been working for you. Like I said, uh, I didn't have good experiences with it personally. 
So okay. that's just me. <laughs> Okay. And I, I respect that. I mean, I have been maybe lucky that I've had excellent experiences, but my question is how, so then they have to literally copy paste everything out onto their desktop and then reload it onto Wix. There's no other transfer. Um, yeah, they, they can, like I said, they can export the package and they're going to have to find a way to, um, to rehost it on their own. So if, you know, because Wix is, is a tool that, kind of forces them to use, you know, what they need to, you know, what's built into their website. Cause it's really meant for people that uh, don't know anything about web design. It's like, you know, kind of a guided, you know, here's, you know, fill this out, plug this in kind of thing. It's similar to what this is really. Um, but because Wix is, is meant to kind of hold your hand and, you know, just use these tools um, and you'll be able to build a website. Um, in this case, if they want to use the portfolio and they want to keep it and they want to rehost it, they're going to have to download the package and they're going to have to actually um, upload it. And, and forgive me, uh, Jacqueline. So, uh, Catherine, when they when they download the package, basically, it's taking all of their artifacts into a zip file, and so each one of those things is downloaded automatically into that zip folder that they can extract and then um, either individually upload um, if they would like or if they send the whole thing as a package to someone and that person can then click on the index.html which is a file that's located in there they will be able to open it on their local device to just see it briefly but it won't be something that can be shared with mass amount of people so okay. yeah just as an option and blackboard designed it that way on purpose because they wanted for, to protect privacy that's why the sharing function is is a little bit persnickety is because it, it really was meant to be a space for students to work um, and choose who they share their work with. I have a question. Um, so I am interested in um, weekly submissions and more about um, work in progress. Okay. So when the student shares their portfolio, are they sharing their entire portfolio or can they share one specific page, for example? Um, they're going to share a snapshot of their entire portfolio, but I think that's a good intersection. I think um, that you guys probably would like to see, well, how is this going to affect um, my grading and, and, you know, how do I make it a part of my class? So. Uh, are we all okay to, to move on to that topic? And I had um, another question regarding the files. So if students want to, um, if they have, you know, large video files on Dropbox or Google Drive, is that easy to embed? Is there... Yes, I can answer that, uh, yeah. Michelle. It's easy to embed. They use the same text editor. They can embed um, videos. Okay. Not not just um, not just uh, QuickTime videos, right? I mean YouTube. If, if they have an embed code that they can they can then use the text editor to put in HTML right yeah. on there. Yeah. Yeah, they can they can use the the mashup feature where they can actually just search for stuff. Um, through YouTube and, and find what they're looking for and embed it that way, or they can they can go into YouTube and take the embed code and flip over to the HTML window and just paste it. Um, or they can also just put in a, a simple share link that you can click on and launch the video. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so before I get into grading workflow, I want to talk about how students can share. Um, so there's a couple ways that they can do that. Um, like I was mentioning, you can set up a link where they can turn in their portfolio and that's what's gonna stick it in your grade center. But for those of you that want students to be able to share their portfolios with the rest of the class, you can actually add a link um, that uh, allows them on the left-hand navigation bar that allows them to share their portfolio with the class and then students can click on this link and then they can go in and look at each other's portfolios. And it's, again, it's going to be a snapshot of when they shared it. So, you know, if you say, Hey, once a week, I want you guys to share your portfolio. 
um, you'll end up with a long list of portfolios from your class, you know, with, with a time and date stamp. But every time they click on that link, it's going to take them in to a dynamic presentation of the portfolio. So they'll be able to click through all of it, you know, so wherever they're at, whatever they're working on, you know, it'll all be in there. Um, it's just going to be, you know, date stamped. Like this is where I was when I shared it. So you can do check-ins and you can have them share it with the class. Um, you just need to make sure that you add a tool. Um, so you go into, you know, you click on this plus button, you go into the tool link, and then you select, uh, Stella, is it portfolios homepage or portfolios? I always uh, forget. I believe, um, I believe it's, what's that? going to be weird for me too, but I think it might be portfolios. Yeah. And you can name it anything you want. You know, if you want to name it student gallery, because you want this, them to, to share, um, you know, their art sketches, um, or their videos that they're working on or, or whatever, you can call it anything, but the tool you want, I'm pretty sure it's, it's just portfolios. I think, I so. think the portfolio homepage is the other one. Let me just see if I made a liar. Nope, I got it right. So, <laughs> so you want to click on portfolios. Now this work on my portfolio link, this takes them over here to their, their portfolio homepage so that they can then go on to, you know, I just do that as a convenience for them um, so that they can just jump right into their portfolio page and, and go back to working on, you know, whatever they're doing um, in their portfolios. Uh, Okay, so I'll pause there. Any, did I kind of cover the question as far as like how do students share it with the class or do we have any more follow-up questions? Uh, so I have questions about the comments. Mm -hmm. um, so multiple students can comment. Can you show us that interface? You know, I was, I'll need to poke around at that one a little bit more unless Stella can answer that question because I was not seeing where I could make a comment, whereas I used to be able to do it all the time. I, I saw it on the top um, right corner. When you opened your uh, portfolio, the, the other one. Yeah, gallery. The... Okay. Hang on. Um, so, so go into edit. But, so if you go into an actual portfolio, click view on yeah. your portfolio. Okay. On the top, I right on the right ah. hand. Yeah, I think that these comments, but I think the comments are for the total portfolio, right? Not the sections. It, it will go for, yeah, it'll, it'll go to the student or whoever's portfolio it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then they have the option to uh, make it public or not, I think. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, so tragic being an English teacher and I can't spell. Um, okay. Uh, so again, same thing. You give it, you give it a label and then you're going to have that text editor, you know, the same one that you're used to. And then you just click submit and then that that comment becomes part of the body of the portfolio and this is something that can be seen in the actual portfolio or is just the student who sees it it's up to the student if they want to keep the comments hidden then it's only going to be for them to see okay but um if they if they don't click the box that says to keep them private then the, they'll you know anyone will be able to see the comments Jacqueline, so about that. When you click on comments, they'll be able to just go in and open them. So I, I have a question about that. I have um, a requirement for the students to comment on each other's work. Mm -hmm. um, would they be would they be able to see the comments, and would I be able to see the comments that the other students made? So for that, Danielle, I honestly I think you're going to be better off with a discussion. Um, not that they can't use the portfolio to build their work, but if you want the students to be able to talk to each other about their work, I would rather say, take that, you know, take your sketch or take your, 
poem or whatever it is that you want people to be able to talk to each other about and put it in a discussion, you know, post and then let them have a threaded discussion about it. If you want to be able to comment on it yourself and see the students comments and, you know, let the students talk to each other about a piece of work. I think it's going to get that job done better for you. Because the, the way that the comments display in the portfolio is it's clunky. Jacqueline. Yes, <clears throat> I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I was going to, I was just going to say, I was going to answer uh, some comments that are in the chat mm -hmm. that I think would be beneficial to all. Um, uh, Vivian was asking if uh, you have an example of an actual class Blackboard page, which with shared examples. <clears throat> She's confused about whether the list becomes long and shows several snapshots of the same student. Um, uh, Vivian, the, I think, I believe the snapshot gets, and um, Jacqueline, you correct me, I'm not sure about that. It gets replaced, right? I don't remember. Um, but there, there's confusion about the snapshot uh, as well. Of, I, so this is not a living document. The students are sharing a snapshot. Right. No, I think that's a great question. I'm going to write that down and um, do a little research on it. Um, because I think you are going to end up with a long list of snapshots. Uh, okay. I, I was under the impression that it was replaced each time the instructor, um, I, but you're right. Go ahead and do that. Um, but to answer the snapshot question, the students are continually working on their, um, on their portfolio and that they share just a snapshot of, of a date and time, specific date and time of what they did at that point they can continue to update it and then they'll have to reshare it. Yeah, so um, basically every single time that someone shares a snapshot, um, yeah, that's a really good question if it gets replaced or not. We'll have to play around with that and, and see what happens. I'll see if I can find out real quick. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, since we've only got about 15 minutes left, um, I want to show you guys how it's going to, uh, you know, be, well, okay. First, I want to show you how to make a portfolio assignment just to make sure that you're comfortable with that. Um, so you're going to, um, you're just going to go to assessments and you're going to select assignment. You're going to give it a name. So we'll say 1800s check in number two. Um, please post your progress on your favorite poem, a uh, poet. And always put the date, please do, um, Okay, oops, nope, sorry, clicked the wrong thing. All right, and then um, if you have any files or anything you want to attach, always put the due date. I'm gonna do Thursday the 13th. Um, how many points are they gonna get for it? For their check-in, we'll give them two, or 10, excuse me. Um, if you wanna add a rubric, which is really helpful, um, and I'm gonna do workshops on rubrics um, in a couple of weeks, but you can select a rubric or you can create a rubric for it on the fly, um, which will then be connected with your ability to grade the assignment. But um, you can do that here. Submission details. This is where it matters. You need to select portfolio submission. Um, I also encourage instructors to at least give students two attempts to submit an assignment because if their computer crashes or their internet goes down or, you know, some other act of God, you know, that, that makes it so that they can't um, <clears throat> get their assignment submitted when they were trying to, especially if you have a due date, um, that just it re results in less uh, freaking out. The, you know, students that emailing you, I can't, I try to get it in, blah, 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 this happens. So I always encourage just, just please give them at least two shots to turn something in. Um, all of your other grading options are available to you, okay? 
So if you want to do a score, if you want to do a letter grade, if you want to do a percentage, it's up to you. All of that stuff is the same when you're setting up the assignment. The most, just really the most important thing is that you have to click this um, portfolio assignment. And then from there, um, just click submit. And that's it really, it's, it's that simple to make a portfolio assignment. Um, now, when it comes to grading it, once a student turns in your, their portfolio assignment, it's going to show up in your needs grading area like you're used to, okay? So if you wanna grade the assignment, you're just gonna click um, on the link for the student. And when it takes you into your grade center, it's gonna show up just as though you were grading an essay or, or a picture or anything else. It's, but the nice thing about it is that it's a dynamic snapshot. You can actually click through the portfolio and you can review it. You can open artifacts from this view. Um, and then um, you can close out. Okay, I read that artifact, great. So you're able to actually click through the whole portfolio from your needs grading view. Um, and then if you want, you can either give them a score manually or because I attached a rubric to this, if I want, I can um, open up the descriptions and the feedback and then I can just score them and you know, make my comments on each individual category of what um, I asked them to do for that assignment. And then if you notice, the rubric will automatically calculate the score for me based on the way that I set up the rubric. Now, if there's an area where, you know, you saw the portfolio and you said, well, this area needed work because, but there was another part of their, you know, portfolio that they just did an amazing job and you feel like giving them some extra credit or something like that, that's okay. You can actually choose to still say, well, even though it's, you know, based on the calculation, it's only 8.35, but I still feel like they deserve full credit because they went above and beyond um, in this other area. You can still give them 10 points for the whole assignment if you want to. Um, if you want to just let it calculate, then that's fine. That's going to be their score. And then you can give them overall feedback. You know, um, pretty good job. However you want to put it. I have a question, Jacqueline. Yes, ma'am. Um, all right, so I don't grade my students because it's a creatively driven project. So it's credit, no okay. credit. Mm -hmm. And I want them to keep revising it throughout the whole nine weeks. Uh -huh. So can they just go back and revise something they did in the first week? 100% yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, so, um, and that's something else. I, I don't know if I'm gonna, if you would like to to talk to me more about um, setting up your grade book or, and, and just grading in general, I can show you more. It's such a it's such a deep topic that um, I don't know if we're going to do a workshop on it or not. Um, I've done them before, but it's just one of those topics that people get really passionate about. So I like to work with people one on one. But um, when it comes to how you grade, if you want to just say yes, you turned it in, and so I'm giving you points for making continuing to make progress, you can do that. It's just we have to set it up through your grading schema. Um, and then you can set up a rubric to just say, did you do it? Yes or no. And if they didn't turn in their update and you want to dock them for the fact that they're lollygagging, um, you can you can change your rubric. And I, I am going to be doing workshops on rubrics um, in like two weeks, I think, um, where I'm just explaining like, here's how you create a rubric and here's all the different ways that you can customize your rubric. For the sake of this demo, I really wanted to focus on what you could attach to your portfolios so that it makes it easier for you to grade. Um, but yeah, the grading rubrics and, you know, setting up your grade rubric is a um, <clears throat> whole different beast. Um, but yeah, you can actually just have a rubric that simply says, did they do it? Here's the point. Did they not do it? Okay, no points. And you can give them feedback saying, you know, you, you missed the deadline for turning in your latest update. And yeah, they can absolutely continue to go in and, and work on their portfolio, which is part of what is so powerful about the fact that they're sharing a snapshot. Um, 
of where they're at at the moment because it might take you four or five days to get around to grading you know what a student turned in for that milestone and you don't want them to not have access to their portfolio to keep working on it so you can give them feedback and they can take that feedback and keep working on it um, and then you know you can finally give them an evaluation in a summative format at the end of your course so the tool will support that you just have to we'll have to work together on how you set that up um, so once you're done you can just say save rubric and all of your notes and comments will be there and if you want to even still give them more feedback um, this is one thing I always like to point out because a lot of people don't realize this but if you click on this little letter a you can then go in and give them recorded feedback by clicking on this microphone it will allow you to launch a separate window and you can um you can make an, a recording um and and you can give them your own comments so for some of you especially in the more creative departments where you want to really talk and reflect on um on what you feel about their work um or if you're just like me and can't spell and don't like typing <laughs> you know you have that option so if you click on again if you click on that a you know letter a it's going to launch that that whole browser for you um, with all of these tools including here's how you can give them feedback um, and i think it might support video too so correct me if i'm wrong I believe it does. Yeah. But I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, I think it does. But at a minimum, I know that you can record your voice. And, you know, a lot of instructors have asked me about that. Well, I really like to give personal feedback and I wanted to hear my voice and I want to be able to connect with them without it just being, you know, text in a box. So that is an option for you in that general feedback to learner box. Okay. And then once you click submit, you know it'll clear it out of your grading center and the student will be able to see their grade on on that point in time of their portfolio um okay so i think i covered most of it we've got about five minutes left um and so i just want to open it back up for for questions or comments i have a question about um the, is the interface going to change once the upgrade to to Blackboard um, that's going to be effective in on the 17th? I don't think so. I, I mean, I know that the interface is going to look a little bit different, but Stella, did, where, the, where will they be able to find portfolios? Because I know the portfolio tool is not going to change, but um, as far as where they go to locate it, I think might change. It should be located on with the rest of the um, everything will be on the left hand side <clears throat> on the menu. It should be there. I, I can um, verify. I'm almost done with the snapshot test. One moment. Yeah. Um, okay. So this this is what Blackboard Ultra is going to look like. Uh, hang on. Let me minimize that so I have less clutter. Um, it might be here under tool. Yep, here it is. This is where they'll find their portfolios. So it's just, it, it's kind of reorganizing um, where uh, things are going to be located. And so they're moving everything over to the left hand side, side instead of having all these tabs up, you know, across the top. So if a student is looking for tools, they're just going to click on tools. And then that's going to allow them to go into their portfolio. And then from there, the interface is going to be the same. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I was wondering um, on the video embed, how easy is that for the students? Like, it's, um, is it drag and drop or do they have to go get code? They're going to have to go get code. Okay. But it's okay. So, you, do you want me to just walk you through it really quickly so you guys can see what it looks like? Only if other people don't have yes. questions. I don't yes, want to waste please. any of this time. Yes. Okay. Um, be gone. Okay. So if I want to add some code, eh, 
All right. And so, by the way, I, I realize I forgot to talk about these little plus buttons. The plus button is how you add another section. Or you use the plus button over here if you want to add another page. Um, okay. So this little box right here switches you over to the HTML view. So once I open that, let's just go to YouTube. What are we thinking? It's Friday. You want some Spice Girls? <laughs> okay. So we'll go into Spice Girls. Uh, let's mute that. So we don't actually want to listen to Spice Girls. Um, so you're going to click on Share. And it's going to give you some options. You have to click here where it says embed. And from there, all you have to do is click this button that says copy. And it'll automatically copy the code to my clipboard. And then I'm going to go back to Blackboard. Hey, right. ah, there we go. Then I'm going to go black, back to my HTML code view. And I'm just going to paste it. Click update. And then I'm going to click save. And now I have Spice Girls. So it's not really that hard. There's there's plenty of tools um, that are just instantaneous. Um, it's just a couple of clicks, really. But the trick is knowing that when you add a section, you have to know to click HTML, open that text box, and put the code there. Right? And when you're when you're uh, when you're getting um, your embed code, you need to say, "Okay, I want to share this." And it says, "Well, how do you want to share it?" Well, I want to share it with embed code. So you need to teach them to click here. And that's going to give them the code. And they don't even need to do the whole, you know, oh, I've got to drag and this and that. They just need to click copy. And it'll automatically put it on their um, on their clipboard. And then they could just go back to the window and paste it. I have a question about uh, if you can go back to where you were doing the embed code from YouTube. Um, it said start at. Is there also an end at option? Um, okay. I think I'm a little bit confused as to what you I, I can go ahead and jump in on this one. Um, okay. no, there, there, there's only a section that says, uh, where you can start it. Um, you would have to, usually what I do, if I wanted to end at a specific time, there's, um, usually I have to look it up. Um, there, there's a, there's something that you have to do with the code to say that you want it to start at this time and have it end at another time. I can look, do a quick search and see if I can find something for you. I would really appreciate that because I have like three hour lectures with over 250 slides and about 30 videos. I know it sounds insane, but it works. So if I can cut down the stuff that I don't need on videos, that would be great. Any other questions I can help you guys with? I just have one last question, Jacqueline. So yes. the students have to create, to begin with, the student will have to create a portfolio at first, like have it, you know, like an open space. And then they will go into the assignment to be able to submit the work. Is that how? <clears throat> yes. So okay. the basic flow from the student perspective is they're going to go into their portfolio area. They're going to click create a portfolio. They're going to give it a title and they're going to decide, you know, how much privacy they want. And, you know, they'll click submit 
and they can skip the tour. And then from here, now they just have a blank space, right? It's just sections and it's just pages and sections. And the sections are just boxes on a wall, really. They can put as many boxes as they want. They can have as many pages as they want. It's totally an open space. And then from there, as I demonstrated, um, they can go into, you know, the course, which you're going to create assignments that say, you know, you need to turn in your portfolio this week. Um, I want, you know, I want to see your work. And so you can make as many portfolio check-ins as you want. Um, if you've got, you know, every week they have, um, they have a unit, right? Or they have a unit, but every week they're going to work on that unit until it's done and then you're going to move on to unit two, et cetera. Okay, fine. So all you need to do is create a content folder and just say, you know, week one and, um, um, and then from there, in that week, just create another assignment and say, you know, portfolio check-in and put your instructions, any files you want to, them to review to help them with the assignment, pick your due date, um, add a rubric if you want one. Oops, I didn't mean to click that. Hmm. Sorry, cancel. Okay. Um, add a rubric if you want it. But the important thing is just don't forget to click this portfolio submission and set your attempts. Yes, yes. Um, oh, whoops, forgot points. However many points you want to give them for their progress, and then there's your there's your check-in. So you can you can create as many folders as you want with check-ins for each week, so that you make sure that they're making forward progress, um, and that they're not lollygagging and just doing it all at the end. Um, so that's one of the things that I like to reinforce with portfolios: is don't let them, you know just do it once every month or something. Just you, you, sh you really should, this is a matter of best practices, you really should have them checking in at least once a week, at least so you know that they, they are working on whatever that, that ultimate assignment is. And so you can have them turn in as many snapshots as you want and they'll all end up you know, here in your needs grading area for you to, to review and leave comments and feedback and give them their points. Okay. Great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, so I know we're a little bit over time. I'm just gonna leave this up on the screen. Um, for any of you guys that um, kind of had like some deeper questions or um, I know with um, with Anik, uh, you know, you had some questions about issues with publishing the portfolio. Maybe we could talk offline, you know, so please just shoot me an email. but. Here's my contact information. If you have more questions or if you would like me to go over anything else with you regarding the portfolio, um, I am a, you know, a new ID to the team. I've been with us for a couple of months now, but I've been working with a few faculty members to really do deeper dives into what, they're, what you guys are trying to accomplish, uh, what specific areas you might be struggling with in terms of converting your class to a um, distance education format. And, um, you know, so I've been uh, working with the, with a, a lot of different faculty in the humanities group um, to try to help you guys kind of move things, you know, from what is typically a traditional format to, um, to this distance education format. So, you know, even if it's not about portfolios, I'm here to help you guys. Um, just reach out to me, shoot me an email and I can schedule a consultation with you um, and we'll figure out, you know, what you're struggling with and, and how I can help you. And thank you guys for joining. I hope that you found the, the session helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, one one thing I want to mention really quick, I don't know if whoever's remaining, uh, the students do delete their portfolio snapshot or remove it from where they're sharing it, and then they would reshare it again. So I believe it just updates the, the one that they've shared already, unless you remove it from your um, area, and then they can reshare it again. So you don't have too many of them going on. We'll send it more information on that um, when we get it. Thanks, Stella, for chasing that down. Of course. Um, can I ask Hugo a question since he just posted this? You have something about recording your lecture. Do you yeah. have, how do I get a transcript of my lecture? A printed transcript or just the text? The transcript, I think if Dylan is available, he answers questions regarding Stella, do we want to do so, um, transcripts are harder to do. We, we, uh, TechSmith Relay will send you a caption file. Unfortunately, that doesn't come out as a transcript. Now, if you have a student who needs accommodations and I send it to get captioned from a third party, I can turn that into a transcript. But unfortunately, none of the auto captioning features create a transcript. Um, is there another piece of software I could overlay on a recording in my class to get a transcript? Are you recording in Zoom or how are you recording? Recording in Zoom. I mean, I could record in anything else. Uh, um, Zoom also has uh, uh, captions. When, if you do record to the cloud, it, it does do some captioning. I don't know how good they are. Dylan, do you know? Well, they're pretty good, but also the the great captions. She's looking for a transcript. Oh, sorry. So, uh, as far as I know, because it's harder for uh, AI to generate the transcript in that way, I've never seen uh, auto transcripting done by that. Now, if if you if we use uh, captions like a third party, but that's very expensive. They do generate a text file. Yeah, no, I know that. I don't want to incur any additional fee. So, but there's no other way to get a- Well, um, I'm, I'm going to do some research and I will email you and get back to anything I find on it. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Let me see. And by the way, I'm Catherine Clinch. Hi, Catherine. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I like your husband very much. Thank you so much. I do too. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Thank you, Stella. That was a um, little late, Stella. We don't believe you. <laughs> so Stella and I have had conversations. I have annoyed her out of her mind and <laughs> she may be getting another um, call from me soon, but. <laughs> no worries. I appreciate still it. Still recording? <laughs> I am. I'm still recording. So this has all been recorded. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, now it's on record that I, I, I can I can trim it off the end. <laughs> I'll stop recording now. Thank you. Okay. So.